dancing. Hello, good evening, everybody again. Uh, Nancy Barbie Bio. Nancy Barbie is a member of the Rotary Club of Maysville, North Carolina, and served as a direct district governor of North Carolina District 7730 in 2009 and 2010. She has served her club, district, and zone in many capitals. Capacity. Her club service includes club president five times, international service chair, youth service chair, secretary foundation, advocate and membership advocate. On the district level, she has served as DRFC, annual program fund chair, district trainer, G, GSE chair, and team leader in India to India, International Service Chair and Global Grants Chair. She was instrumental in gaining partnership from two districts in India to provide $80,000 to feed hungry children in North Carolina District 7730. She has also helped clubs in many districts, partners with host clubs in countries around the world, Global Grants in the following areas have resulted in these continued partnership, heart surgeries, eye surgeries, literacy, vocational training centers for women, water and sanitation projects, orphanages and med medical missions. Nancy currently serves as Rotarian, as Rotary Regional Foundation Chair for Zone 33. She has been an international GETS trainer for two years and RI president representative domestically and internationally. Currently, she serves as a local facilitator for the Regional Leader, Leaders Global Institute training for incoming zone coordinators. Nancy has been leading national immunization teams to India for the past 12 years. Nancy holds a BS degree in early childhood education and a master in literacy science from East Carolina University. She retired in 2007 from the state of North Carolina after teaching for 30 years. She has been an educational consultant in the area of technology for schools domestically and internationally, and continues to sub substitute in local schools to keep current with educational issues. Nancy is the recipient of Service Above Self Award, citation of merit, merit Meritous Service, Distinguished Service Award, and the International Service Award for a polio free world. She is a Paul Harris Society Charter member, beneficiary bequest society member, and major donor of Rotary Foundation. Thank you so much, Amanda, for that, that lovely um, introduction. And Angela, thank you for inviting me. It's so nice to be here. Tom, good to see you here. I've seen you on several calls and around the zone, so good to see you here. But so great to see so many faces from around the world. I mean, it, it is amazing, Dolly, what you said about Zoom. It's, it's what we can do now. And I think we need to continue this so we can connect even more. I'm so happy to be here to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is peace. And as you know, uh, one of Rotary's areas of focus is peace and conflict prevention and, and resolution. So creating a peaceful environment is the cornerstone of our Rotary world. Everything, everything we do in Rotary, be it a random act of kindness or a deliberate act of love brings peace to someone somewhere, everything we do. Let me tell you what Webster's dictionary says about peace. They define peace as a state of tranquility or quiet, such as, freedom from civil disturbance. 
or a state of security or order within a community provided for by law or custom. I think there's a lot of adults, especially if you ask them what is peace, they might say it's the absence of war. But I think peace means so many different things to different people. And I need some, I need to tell you a few little stories and, and some peaceful things that I've seen around the world. It was a fortunate, I've been fortunate enough to travel to different places and be really involved in a lot of global grants. One of the places that I was uh, visited recently, well, not that recently, let's say last year before the, all this COVID took place, but was Ghana in Africa. And several districts got together to build three schools for um, children in, in very rural areas of Ghana, very, um, very rural little villages. But we built two elementary schools and now we are just getting ready to complete a junior high school. In the process of building that, and that was a pilot program from the Rotary Foundation trustees to, to build a building. And they go back and forth with this. One, one year they'll give, do a pilot program and you can build a, a building and then they'll take that away and they'll wait a few more years and then they will do it again. But we were happy to be in that round of, of uh, um, process where we could build schools. So as we were traveling there, I said, you know, we were only allowed to build four classrooms for each school. And I said, no, no, this, th this can't be. We have to have libraries. There has to be as a former librarian. I mean, there's gotta be a library in the school. To me, that's the hub of the whole school. So we got it extended to build a six classroom building. And one of those classrooms will be the library. And I was just thrilled with that. So now I have a friend in India that um, has collected books and he has his own foundation. He's a Rotarian. They give people donate books to him. So we're in the process of setting up uh, sending a shipment of 10,000 books for these schools that have been built to have libraries for those children. Now, I was over there and we inaugurated one of those schools to see the children and the parents as we opened the gates and they flooded into that courtyard and went through their classrooms and were so excited to see that they actually had a building, whereas before they had hutch, little hutches with thatch roofs and sat on the ground to have their lessons. To me, those children, when they were smiling, to them, they were say, to me, they were saying, peace is a school where I can learn. Peace is a school. And now when they get those books, I hope they say peace is also books because I can read and travel the world right here in my own backyard. There was another example that I wanted to give to you. A young Rotarian in my district, Perry Ditch has been, he was a music, he just retired from teaching school, but he was a music uh, teacher and a band instructor for years in a local high school. He'd been involved in and gotten connected to a school in the Kibera slums in Kenya, in Nairobi, Kenya, and traveled to visit that school many, many, many times. The school is Cherry Education Center. And it's, it's in a very, very slum area. The building is, is not very in good, very good shape. Um, toilets are not in very good shape. The water is not clean. So they, they're in need of a lot of things. But the thing that they loved the most was learning music and being able to play music. And not only did he teach them music, he connected them via Skype when he came back with his students right here in North Carolina. So the students were able to get that experience of helping people across the world to learn music. I visited that school and listened to a concert that those children gave. It was phenomenal. The looks on their faces, to me, they were saying, peace to them was music, was music. 
as it was mentioned in my um, introduction, I travel to India every year. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go this year and take groups of Rotarians and non-Rotarians every year to, um, to India to drop those two precious drops in the child's mouth for polio eradication. As you know, polio eradication is our number one priority in the Rotary Foundation. And it's such a pleasure to go there and an honor to take Rotarians so that they can see what I have seen so they can see projects that have been done in, uh, in the local area that the Rotarians are doing there. But as we drop those two drops in a child's mouth, the mothers, the fathers bring their children and they, they touch your feet and are so grateful because they know, they know that those two drops have saved their child from having polio. To me, they're saying peace, or Rotarians that come from across the world to drop those two precious drops. As I said just a few minutes ago, not only did they get to drop the drops, those Rotarians get to see other projects that we've done and the global grants that we've done and other districts have done throughout India. One of them that I've been, uh, has been honored to be involved in are heart surgeries for children. You know yourself if you have children or or have nieces and nephews or grandchildren, the excitement that you have, nine months of you waiting, you're waiting, 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 and nine months you're waiting for that child to, to hold in your arms for the very first time. Can you imagine the devastation that a mother, a father feel if they're told that their child has a heart defect and may not live for very long? Parents in India come for hundreds of miles to travel to big cities, Calcutta, Delhi, to have heart surgeries to save their child, to save their child from death. They travel sometimes with little or no money, but they bring that child and to watch their faces when that child comes out of surgery and the doctor says your child's heart defect has been fixed and will lead a normal life. I know that mother and father think right then, peace to them is a healthy child, just as we would feel over here in our countries too. We are very blessed to be involved in eye surgeries too. There are a lot of, of people in India that they have vitamin deficiencies and they develop cataracts a lot of times at a very young age. But we did some uh, global grants to um, set up an eye clinic so that um, once the camps are, are, and they are held and they uh, identify parent, people that have uh, cataracts, they're sent to have the cataract surgery. I talked to an older woman. She was maybe, she was probably younger than me, but she was a grandmother. And she, uh, through an interpreter, she told me, you're not going to believe this, but I can see for the first time in, in many, many, many years. And I'm so excited to go back home so I can see my grandson's face for the very first time. I don't have to just touch it to feel it. I can actually see him as I hold him in my lap. And I'm sure she would say peace to her is eyesight. Eyesight. Something so simple we think about. You know, I've seen water wells we're just have, that are in a lot of villages and all in places around the world we just finished a global grant and got approved a global grant for a solar uh, panels on a water filtration system in Pakistan and that water filtration system will supply water for hundreds of thousands of people in the area I've seen children pumping water and drink, putting their mouth under that pump so that the water can drip in their mouth and they can drink clean water for the very first time. Can you imagine? Clean water for the very first time. I'm sure they're saying, peace to me is clean water. It's clean water. So many things that we take for granted. 
locally right here in North Carolina, you know, COVID hit us all hard and it has, it's still hitting us hard. There were children that were, uh, schools were closed and a lot of our children right here in North Carolina depend on lunch and breakfast at their school to eat. And when those schools closed, they didn't get those meals as readily as they did when they came to school. And we recognized that through Rotary. So we started a program called Protein Packs. And with the partnership between the Salvation Army and a local um, restaurant called the Golden Corral, both of those people in, in the Salvation Army and Golden Corral were Rotarians. We developed a program to, to uh, buy protein packs and Salvation Army passed them out to uh, families in need of food. Also, we provided and made sure that the students, uh, that we helped the school system send buses to the students' homes so they could get a hot breakfast and a hot lunch every single day. And that's continuing today. And I know those children are saying, and their parents are saying, peace to them is food, is food so they don't have to go hungry. I, I've been fortunate in the last um, six months being able to tutor some little girls in, in, um, in second grade. And I go to their home and, and, uh, and tutor them. They're pretty sharp little, little girls. We've having, we're having a great time doing all types of things and, and learning about different cultures and learning about other things that you have to learn in second grade. But I asked them one day, I said, what is peace to you? What does peace mean to you? These are seven and eight year old little girls. And here's what they said. One of them said, peace means caring. You care about other people. You care about how they feel and not being a bully and don't want to hurt their feelings. Peace is when people get along with each other. Peace means that everything is relaxing and calm. Her mother does, teaches yoga, if you can, if you understand that. So she's, she's all into relaxing and calm. That's what peace means. And finally, the older girl said, peace means love. Peace means love. And to me, that says it all. As I said at the very beginning, everything we do in Rotary begins and ends with peace. Our projects, both locally and globally, bring hope to those in distress our peace centers that are placed strategically around the world give those young professionals tools and skills that they need to spread peace in their own backyards. They serve in nonprofits, government agencies, and private businesses to promote conflict resolution and change policies. They change government policies that support equality for all. I believe that fruit, that peace is the fruit of our spirit. And as we change the world, and we can, and we do, we also change ourselves. Through the efforts that we provide and the, and the projects that we provide, and by Rotarians joining together, no matter the color of our skin, the religion that we practice, the culture we embrace, or the place we call home. Folks, I believe that peace is possible. Peace is possible. And I believe that you do too. Thank you so much to Dyke for having me. It's been such a pleasure and an honor to be with you tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, you know, you don't realize how little things, we don't, as from what I heard from your stories, by the way, amazing stories. You don't really hear, being on a small island, you don't really get to know all of these things that are happening. Uh, but hearing these stories, you know, it gives you that little things that we take for granted. If once we have just a little bit of gratitude towards it, you do find peace. From all your stories, that is what I'm hearing. And um, I really wanna thank you 
and I wish you peace. And I'm going to open up the floor uh, to anybody who would like to either comment or ask a question, if that's okay. Anyone? Yes, Dolly. Yes, President Dolly. Okay, Angela. Same um, as your sentiment, uh, listening to the stories, we all look for big things to put it towards peace, but it's the small things that we do also are very impactful. And uh, she named some, um, PDG Nancy named some of the items that we ourselves work with. And I can remember working with these students from different schools, the, 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 the gratitude shows on their face, bring peace to your heart. And most times in that case, I become emotional when I work with them. Even though they give me energy, I also feel emotional. And those things we would take for granted, but for kids who need those assistance is a big thing for them. But we look, we see the small things, and yes, it is peaceful. Thank you, Angela. I'm going to open the floor for anyone else who would like to say something. One thing I forgot to mention, I think, for me, because I'll be getting my second shot. Piece is that is that COVID vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I think those have had that shot and those are looking forward to have it. That's a pe that'll be a peaceful feeling to come over me that, oh man, I'm protected to somewhat anyway. Yeah. Peace is not having that fear. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Nancy. Again, thank you, Angela, for ha inviting Nancy to speak to our club. Thank you, Amanda, for introducing Nancy. I am going to give one minute for anybody else who would like to say something or make say. Uh, yes, Mike. Yeah, in the, in, the, in the way that Nancy has introduced it, it made me think that I run uh, similar to Ryla, um, a weekend experience for young carers. And although I've worked as an educationist with young carers and feel I know quite a lot about them, but they come for the weekend and very defensive, not going to share their positions. They open up incredibly well. But on a couple of occasions, as part of the feedback, they've said peace to them was being able to sleep all through the night because normally like a mum with a new baby or their responsibility for who they care for, um, they're always on edge, that a strange sound will always wake them. And it was that feedback I hadn't come across before that just said a good night's sleep. Wow. Thing, little things we take for granted, like how Nancy said. Um, I would, at this point, ask PDG Felix Stubbs if he would like to tell, tell us something, say something. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, how you doing, PDG Nancy? I really wanted to hear the presentation, but I came in a bit late, only because DGE Louis gave me an impossible task to do just before the meeting, and I was busy doing that but I'm gonna surprise him and show him that I completed his task. But uh, the end that I heard in Nancy was very inspiring. And I hope I get to hear your presentation in full at some time before the month is done. Good to see you, Felix. Thank you. We will actually have it recorded and put on our um, YouTube and Facebook. So if you'd like, I can send you a link. Send me the link and I'll make sure I listen over the weekend. <laughs> okay, we will do. Uh, DG Louie, would you like to say something? Yeah, hey, uh, the presentation was wonderful. Very, very good. Very inspiring, as uh, PDG Felix was saying. Uh, I see that uh, every small thing can do a lot. So we have to concentrate and work for peace for the world. 
for everybody. Thank you, Louis. AJ? Good, uh, good night, um, President Dolly. I have the same sentiments. Um, today I had the, uh, the opportunity, I'm an assessor on a juvenile court, and we had three youngsters, unfortunately, that pleaded guilty to assault. But I made sure I talked to them about the, what they did and the different strategies that they could have used. And I also talked to them about their education. That is key. Uh, these were, I think one was 14, two or 14 and a 50, 16 year old. And I looked at, you know, these are youngsters that is our future. They are, they're going to be our, our future. And we have to try to mold them in the right direction. And as um, the speaker just mentioned, every little thing that we do, we have to encourage them. And again, that is, um, to me, that is what peace is on the board also. Thank you, AJ.